now to the potential trucker protest. Governor Kathy Hochul is warning drivers take precautions, heed the warnings. So we're getting the warning out early so all the truckers and truckers associations can get the word out as well. It's a ban on tandem trucks and tractor trailers. The very high likelihood that there are going to be protests. That's because we've seen hundreds of protests in New York City already. The New York Times reports several major investment firms are leaving. Thank God for truckers. Andre, what could this boycott do to prices, not just in New York, but for all of us across the country? At the city braces for an influx of truckers, the sudden push for preparedness has stores rushing to replenish. There are fences up, there are police officers on horseback, and they're going to have a security perimeter that stretches for several avenues here. And this is because of the two factors, the two issues that you sort of alluded to right there. The first is... Yeah, so you show me the man, I'll show you the crime. That was a famous saying from Stalin's chief of police. That's how the prosecutorial system is now working against Donald Trump today. Not only was this not a victimless crime, Sean, you want to think about the people who did business with Donald Trump. They made money off of those interactions, not just average consumers, but financial institutions. So for her to bring this case, I think is a legal and unconstitutional violation. And when that's overturned on appeal, she's now talking about seizing Trump's residences and real estate properties. I want to know what property of Letitia James is going to be seized when this is overturned on appeal for the damage this is doing to our country and to trust in the standard of the rule of law in the United States of America. We need accountability when this is overturned on appeal. But for now, I'll say this is a travesty of justice and this should not happen in the United States of America. Legal hits keep on coming for Donald Trump and the world is waking up to the full banana republic nature of the judgment handed down against the former president in New York City last week. The corrupt persecution by this regime will not stop with me. Oh, it's not going to stop with me. I mean, they... They gave me a fine of $355 million for doing nothing wrong. This was a fine like never seen before. And you know the amazing thing? The republic, this, the people in this country, they understood it immediately. It's all a big hoax. If I wasn't running, I wouldn't have been sued. None of these indictments would happen. How much is this just the Democrats utterly weaponizing the justice system to punish Donald Trump? Well, it's unparalleled and unprecedented. Uh, this statute has never been used in this way in the history of the state of New York. No comparable statute has been used in this way in the entire country. No case like this has ever been pursued against a leading political opponent of the presidential candidate or anybody for that matter. I've been indicted more than some of the greatest criminals in the world for nothing. For nothing. If, I, if my plane flies over a blue state... That evening, I get a subpoena to report to a federal grand jury. So we're, we are in unparalleled waters. And consequently, what we're witnessing is we're seeing a lot of blowback from the business community, the real estate community, the investment community, saying that they will not do business in New York as long as cases like this are even capable. Because here, there was this is extraordinary because there was simply no victim. The only alleged victim, the banks, testified on behalf of President Trump said that they would not only do the deal again, they were glad they did it the first time, that it was an extraordinarily profitable deal for them to even be in business with Trump. But of course, Trump paid back every penny, nickel, dime and dollar. Last week, former President Trump was slapped with a $354 million judgment, plus interest that compounds every day in his civil fraud case in New York. The case brought by State Attorney General Letitia James. In an interview with ABC News, James warning Trump to pay up. We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. Can you explain that to me? Mm -hmm. What has happened to a, this great constitutional republic that is supposed to be, you know, governed by equal justice under the law and equal application of our laws. Every American should fear this regardless of where they stand politically. That's what I believe. This isn't the American dream. This is the American nightmare. And this is not even about Donald Trump. It's about every other American at home who's now at risk of prosecutorial abuse as well. 
I think one of the great things that happened for this country was in the last week, seeing Fannie Willis actually testify in that case, Sean. There, the American public was able to see Bear. These are the people who are actually pursuing these cases against Donald Trump. People have no idea about basic geography or the basic idea or the understanding of the law as well. These are not the people that our founding fathers envisioned should be in charge of, let alone prosecuting a former president of the United States and somebody who's running for president of the United States. They're rolling over in their graves. We're supposed to be a country where regardless of your skin color and yes, regardless of your political belief, there is one standard of the rule of law in the United States of America. And I'm grateful that Donald Trump is standing strong, that he's actually said it beautifully the other night, actually on Fox, on the uh, the town hall, he said it. You know what my vengeance will be? Success will be my vengeance. There's a trap to try to bait somebody, to come after them in so many different directions that you get them to crumble or to make a mistake. I'm glad to see him going in the other direction to say that, you know what, we're going to chase success. Success is unifying. Success is how we win. And you know what? I have full confidence that that's exactly what's going to happen this November, even though they've created a complicated path to get there. The attorney general saying if Trump does not have the money to pay off his judgment, she will go after some of his real estate properties, including the skyscraper at 40 Wall Street. I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. She will not succeed in that effort. Commercial litigation and bankruptcy lawyer Leo Jacobs says A.G. James has to get in a long line of others before she might ever see a dime from Trump's properties. Number one is the other lien holders, equity holders, judgment lien holders, taxes, New York City, New York State. The list goes on and on and on. Which he says would take years. And as has been reported many times, Trump does not own every building bearing his name. Trump is known for licensing his name to other developers. And circling back to his recent civil fraud trial in New York, Trump has denied any wrongdoing and says he will appeal. And now you have a court trying to limit his ability to challenge this at the appellate level by requiring he post bond of the full amount pending appeal, but that he do so in a manner that does not take into consideration the full value of his properties or by borrowing from someone else or by operating in New York. And so this is extraordinary. We haven't seen anything like this. Frankly, we haven't seen anything like this in the whole world in a long time. And that's why it's so terrifying. And then, Robert, this is the thing that really concerns me, and this is what I always tell people. You know, it shouldn't matter whether or not you like Trump or think he's the worst human being ever to live. The fact of the matter is, today they're going after Donald Trump using the law. Tomorrow it could be some other person or somebody else who, or you, who doesn't toe the line in whatever the kind of political regime of the day. You're going